In this video, we're going to sculpt a character bust using just standard ZBrush primitives. In this case, we're going to use the polysphere, which comes with ZBrush. It's just a polygon sphere that you can see here. And one thing that's special about this sphere is it has no poles on it. It's all quads. If I step down to the lowest subdivision level, you can see that it's all just little square polygons. There's no poles at the top and bottom. If I were to go to the Sphere 3D tool, you can see this has poles on it. No, this is not what we want. We want to use the polysphere primitive here. If you don't have that in your tool menu, then you'll just go to the light box and you can load it directly from here. There's the polysphere. The nice thing about using the polysphere is you can just quickly rough out very complex characters, very elaborate shapes, from this extremely simple form. So I'll just begin by using the move brush. I'm changing to the move brush here, and I have a hotkey set for that. If I press the B key and then press M for move, you'll see the move brush is there. It's uh, the hotkey that's assigned is V using the brush menu hotkeys, but I've just assigned it to the number one. So if I press one, then that brings up the move brush for me. If I press the X key, that'll give me X symmetry. So I'm just going to snap to the front view here, turn up my draw size, and I'm going to change from the wet red wax shader to the matte cap gray. I'm going to step down a subdivision level or two so I can work with a, a, a more uh, simplified shape. Not as, much sub, not as many subdivision levels there, so I can actually make big form changes very quickly. What I'm going to do is just start roughing in the form of a head. And I haven't really considered what this is going to be yet, so I'm really just sketching right now. Pulling a neck out. Beginnings for some shoulders here. I just want to start giving this an overall shape. Do a bit of smoothing. Just want to make sure that I don't have any areas where the polygons are stretched too far. So it's going to create problems when I start trying to sculpt in uh, more secondary forms and then tertiary details like wrinkles and pores. If those polygons are stretched out too far, there's just not going to be enough uh, uh, resolution there to handle the detail that I want to put in. So I'm just kind of looking for an interesting silhouette right now. I pulled out the back of the head with the intention of, uh, of moving it down, but I actually kind of like the crest that's forming working the jawline now. And really thinking mostly, almost entirely about the silhouette at this point. Pulling the jawline down. If I hold down the shift key, I can change the intensity of this, the, uh, the smooth brush so it's not as destructive as I work, so I'll just smooth this back a little bit. If I hold down the alt key, it'll actually pull straight out along the surface normal, so it helps me just pull this crest up on the head. Try and pull that forward a bit. Pull the jaw out. Now step up a subdivision level now. Go in with the standard brush, which I've assigned to the number two. If you press the B key, then the S key, you'll see that the standard brush is assigned to B here. I've just given it the hotkey of two. 
since I use it very often, I have it assigned right next to the move brush. And I'm just starting to think about some bone structure here. I'm going to mask out the shape of the ear, invert that mask, and then pull this out. Just to give it a start giving it the shape of some ears here. Scrunch that nose up. And still just thinking about the, uh, the silhouettes here, thinking about the, the profiles and the outlines. And looking for something that's uh, you know interesting, aggressive, and jutting that chin forward and bringing the barrel of the mouth out. I'm not completely sure about this crest on the back of the head here. I'm going to bring out the back of the skull though. And now I'm switching to the clay tubes brush. Clay tubes, if you press the B key and then the C key, you'll see clay tubes is assigned to T. I have it assigned just to uh, the number four because it's another brush that I use very often. And I'll step up a subdivision level and just start pulling some of that muscle form that's going to come off the cheekbone here. Sketch in the cheekbone and the, uh, the zygomatic process, the outer corner of the eyebrow here. And that ridge along the uh, the temporal ridge of the skull, that plane change from the side of the head to the top of the head. And the forehead feels a little bit short, so I'm just going to bring that up. It feels a little bit simian right now. It's not really what I want, but um, I'm going to keep playing around with those shapes. I'm going to increase the intensity on the smooth brush here, smooth down the top, smooth back a little bit of what we've just done. Go back in with clay tubes and mass out the uh, the master muscles, those muscles on the sides of the jaw. Bring those up a bit. back in with the move brush. Smooth some of that back a bit. I'm going to bring some of the uh, I'm going to make the eye, eye sockets a little more, a little more shallow just because we're going to be placing some eyes in there. So I'm looking at the shadow of this form right here and I want to bring that jawline down because that shadow wasn't looking looking correct to me. It was problematic. And going back in with the clay tubes brush and just uh, experimenting with forms here at the top of the head. Stepping down a subdivision level so I can knock that back. And going back in with the move brush and scooting around the cheekbone here. Bring this up. Bring that cheekbone forward. And this distance here feels really, uh, really short between the, the the cheekbone and the ear, so I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to pull all these shapes back a bit. Step up a subdivision level. brow 
myself forward a bit from this top view. I'm going to adjust this angle at the side of the eye socket. Shadow that's being cast now, that form, that uh, that brow, that shelf of a brow, but I feel like it's a little too far forward. I'm going to bring it back just a bit. And I'm thinking about this the silhouette still, how this face looks in profile. And if I switch to the flat color shader, which is just right here, the flat color material, I can actually look at the the profiles, at the silhouette directly, and you can even work with this material turned on. And it's much like sketching in thumbnails in marker on paper. So you can really see what type of shapes you're getting, what the initial read is. And you can also, you know, make big changes here. Then go back to the uh the gray material here and, and see what you've done. Don't really like those, so I'm gonna undo that. But it's a great way to kind of free yourself to experiment and not get caught up in, in what your uh what the internal forms look like. Sometimes you'll end up doing more daring things like that. You'll stray from what you know and what you're accustomed to and make more interesting forms if you uh, if you just work in that, that flat color shader. Smoothing those forms back a bit. We'll go ahead and save our work. Just continuing the process, looking around the figure. I like to move to the underside and look at the uh, look at the head from kind of an unexpected angle because it helps you spot problem areas and, and see the form more clearly because you can't have a digital sculpture in front of you and move around it physically but you can do things like look at it from the very top or the very bottom or three-quarter bottom which can be more difficult to do with a, a physical sculpture so you, you may as well take advantage of the benefits of working digitally by doing things like that. Any little thing that can help you see what you're trying to make, see the forms more clearly. Let's smooth that back a bit. I like the sharp forms here. I like how it's you know, a very acute angle to the mouth and to the jawline. I think I might try and pull the brow out again just a bit. It creates a very interesting continuation of the line there. Bring these down. I'm just going to switch to the standard brush and just quickly sketch in some kind of mouth. And we'll step up a subdivision level. Using Control D, I'm going to add one more subdivision level because we were at the top there. I'm just making a very simple form for the mouth. It doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. I'm just trying to get a feel for the character. see that just working from a sphere you can pull an enormous amount of form just out from nothing. Sketching in the ear, just making some ear shapes there. Just some things to catch shadow. I'm going to pull this form forward. There should be a plain change there on the head anyway so I just want to Start adjusting that. There we go. Smooth that back a bit. Let's see where we're going here. Okay. I'm going 
increase the draw size with my clay tubes brush and I'm actually going to turn off the alpha on clay tubes so I'm not getting that um, that ragged edge which can be really useful when you're trying to create very gesturally but I don't want that right now I want to just build up some forms at the temple here that's the the form of the temporalis muscle at the side of the skull so even though I'm working on a creature right now I am trying to root some of his forms in actual human anatomy since he's got a humanoid head I mean there are a lot of touchstones to an actual person here so I'm trying to root him in reality so it feels more realistic even though it's a fantasy creature if you've got these little points uh, that the viewer can look at and just subconsciously recognizes as an accurate human anatomical form it's gonna make the the creature feel even more realistic to them more compelling more viable I'm playing around with the idea of giving him these open skeletal nostrils this may not stick I might do something else but for right now we'll leave that like that step down a subdivision level now and just continue working around the top of the head here figuring out what I want this to actually be I'm actually going to use the move brush and pull this out I'm just going to give him a larger cranium and for right now I'm going to lose some of these crests that I sculpted in they may come back this really is a sketching process for me I'm not sure where it's going still I just know that uh, uh, I'm looking for things that I find interesting and cool as I'm sculpting. And actually, this is another shape that I like here. I like this, this arc. I might pull this forward. And I want to stay away from too many statements in the silhouette. So I've got a statement here with this angle, and a statement here with this arc coming back and around. So. I think those are going to work very well together. We'll see how it continues to evolve. But for right now, that's that's pretty cool. Bringing that temporal ridge and the temporalis muscle back in, that form change there. Mask along that ridge. Bring that muscle out. Smooth it back. <clears throat> Visit the cheekbones here. Bring these out as well. I'm going to dial down the intensity on my smooth brush. I don't want it to be so destructive. This distance here is bothering me, so I want to bring that jawline back. thinking about how the eye socket curves around here to meet up with the nasal bone. Stepping up a subdivision level. And going back to the move brush, and I'm going to work this angle to the cheekbone right here, this plane change from the front plane to the sides of the cheekbone. So again, it's really important to me to always try and think about this creature's anatomy, think about the the fantastic elements of it as well as the humanoid elements of it. Go to the brush menu with B, and then I'm going to use the M polish brush here, which is medium polish. And that just has a nice kind of planing effect. It's a little bit smooth, a little bit flattened. the move 
toothbrush now to actually increase the size of the eyes here. I'm going to bring this out. Bring the spacing out. I'm looking from the top view. I'm just going to move over just a little bit and I'm going to bring out the ears and the cheekbones so that the face, the sides of the head are going at an angle in towards the face. It's little things like that, the way the, the face is oriented on the head from the top view. They're really important that are really easy to miss because you're, you're so caught up in working at it from the front view that you forget to look at it from the top. You forget to look at it from three-quarter front or side. back in with the clay tubes brush here. Going in with the standard brush, I'm just going to etch the back of the ear really quick. Undo that, lower my draw size. And I'm just sketching in just a little bit of negative space behind the ear. And going back to the M polish brush, I'm just going to knock back some of the planes at the base of the skull. brush. I'm going to bring that jawline back again. Bring the ear back. I just want to be really careful not to get too shallow of a space between the cheekbone, or the front face of the cheekbone. Front face of the zygomatic bone here and the ear. I want to make sure that I've got enough space there because it can get very shallow if you spend too much time working it from the front view here. You'll find that you just don't have a lot of space there and it, it doesn't give you a lot of area to, to compress the flesh and, and create expression. It just makes for a very flat head. So you want to be careful of that and try and stay away from that. Pulling this back. And let's save our work. zigzag shape of the cheekbone as it goes back towards the ear and just pulling the lobe of the ear down a little bit bringing those shapes out and smooth back those lips that I put in earlier And using the move brush, I'm just going to tweak this nose shape a little bit. Going in with the standard brush, and I'm actually going to bring down these corners, give them a really interesting kind of septum shape there. There's muscles that come off the, the cheekbone here and grab onto the corners of the mouth. And they help create this plane change there, this triangular shape. It's actually called the infraorbital triangle. There's a name for that. And uh, I'm just trying to get that plane into place. I'm going to undo that movement that I did and keep that arc that I've got going there for the, uh, the lower border of the eye socket. Now I'm going to turn on lasso mode here and I'm going to mask out the head. Press the W key so I'm in transpose move mode. I'm just going to drag a line out there and control click a few times to feather the mask. And I'm just going to stretch the neck out. And go back into draw mode, pressing the Q key. And I'm just going to pull a stroke down here for the sternomastoid muscle, the big neck muscle that is very recognizable. And the collarbones here, the clavicles. And 
the trapezius muscles, which come off the back of the skull here, and then wrap around. Just start shaping those. And I'm going to work the silhouette of the neck here. I'm going to bring this back, bring the larynx forward, smooth some of this back a bit. Use the clay tubes brush to continue forming it. And filling in some of that negative space using the clay tubes brush. I'm going in with the standard brush. That was a little too strong. And putting the pit of the neck in there. There's actually a name for that as well, right in between the clavicles. It's called the uh, in, uh, infraclavicular, or excuse me, it's called the, uh, uh, the clavicular fossa. Or the sternoclavicular notch. It's just that little notch in between these two heads of the clavicles there. I'm going to take the move brush and just pull this forward. Bring that in. I might actually lengthen the neck again. Feels a little bit short. Oops. Make sure that I've masked the back of the head there. There we go. That feels more comfortable. And scoot the sternomastoid forward a bit. Give it a light smoothing just to push it back and we'll pull those clavicles forward a bit because I feel like this guy's a little bit skinny so you're gonna see the clavicles they're gonna be much more pronounced than they would be on a uh, more uh, more meaty or or built individual I'm gonna turn up the intensity on that smooth brush adjusting how the uh, how the chest terminates on this bust okay. alright I'm stepping back now I don't want to become too caught up in these smaller forms I still want to be thinking about the big shapes here the big plane changes and angle changes Visit the shape of the ear here. Bring that out. And with the standard brush, again I've just hotkeyed that to the number two. I'm just going to add some negative space. The conch of the ear there. Let's smooth this back a little bit. using clay tubes to mass out that dent in the back of the skull there. I'm just sketching in this, this indentation here. This frontal part of the skull is called the frontal eminence on a human skull. There's a nice plane change that you get between this corner here, the zygomatic process, and then the uh, temporal ridge here, 
let me turn up my Z intensity a little bit, the temporal ridge, and you get this little plane change between the frontal bump of the skull and then where it turns to the side plane of the, uh, the temporalis muscle and the temporal uh, fossa or the hollow of the temple on the skull. So I just want to start sketching something like that in there. And I'm just going to use the clay tubes brush to fill in a little bit of that. Just want to get that form suggested. go back to the M polish brush and just think about some of the planes here. This is the zygobatic process. This is the corner of the eye socket, the outer corner there. Usually I just try and establish the major planes first here and then I'll break those planes down into smaller planes and that just helps me give, helps me achieve a more uh, refined, structured form. Let's smooth that back just slightly. And I'll do the same here, going in with the M polish brush, and I'm just going to polish down this plane. You see, I'm getting some some fastening through here and I'm not worried about that. I always try and create every shape from the lowest possible subdivision level that could support the form. I try and avoid stepping up subdivision levels until I absolutely must to get the shape that I'm looking for. So here if I step up a subdivision level I need to add a new one so I can just go to geometry, divide, and that'll smooth out a bit. I can divide it again. You'll see that those facets go away. to M polish. save our work. So at this stage I'm going to add in a couple of eyeballs, and I'll do that just by appending spheres into this. Just go to the subtool menu, go to append, and we'll select the polysphere. Now we'll have a polysphere subtool. If I turn on transparency, you can see the spheres inside the head. So I'll press the W key to go into move mode, turn off X symmetry, just move this over to the side, and then press the E key for scale, and I can scale it down just by using this transpose line here. The way the transpose line works is you click and drag and it creates this line and then if you just click and drag in the last circle you can scale that up and down. Now I'll place it in the head.
Now if I turn off transparency, you should be able to see a little clearer where that eye is sitting. And once I like the placement of it, I'll just go to Z plugin, Subtool Master, click the Subtool Master button, and then click Mirror. And I'm going to mirror it across the X axis and merge into one subtool. So now I've got two spheres in there for the eyeballs. And if I turn on transparency again and select the head, I can see through the eyes and I can sculpt through them. So I'm just going to bring the interior of the eye socket out so I can build some eyelids from that. I'm not going to give them too much attention just yet. I just wanted to place them there. If I go to the standard brush, I can mask out the shape of the inside of the eyelid. Invert that mask, and I'll just go back to the clay tubes brush, and holding down the Alt key, I'll just push in. Turn off transparency, and now you can see the eyelid around the eye. Just to tug that out a little bit, do a little bit of smoothing, and then just leave it as that for right now, because I'm not quite sure about the eye placement necessarily just yet. So I just wanted to have some eyes there. save our work.